My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. Good afternoon everybody, Alex with Bay Cities Construction here, welcoming you to the show. We have an amazing show uh, today, uh, where we will be talking about soft story retrofitting. And uh, <clears throat> we have a case study. We are using actual buildings from prospect um, customers that have sent in a bunch of questions and really their concerns for getting their building um, set up and compliant with the city of LA soft story retrofit. We're gonna get into the whole deal, explain to you what the soft story retrofit is, and we're gonna talk about the different parameters for getting these buildings up to code, up to the requirements of the city of LA and the city of Santa Monica. We have an exciting show, stay tuned. Hey YouTubers, did you get a notice to comply from the city of Santa Monica or Los Angeles? You're gonna need a pair of these. You're gonna need some plans. You're gonna need architectural, engineering, and city representation. I am providing a turnkey solution for you. For $12,497, I'm gonna give you architectural, engineering, and city representation. If you want more information about soft story repair, please visit our website, baycitiesconstruction.com. Follow the link below and give our offices a call at 888-881-7355. My name is Alex Rodriguez with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros. Hey folks, welcome back. So we have put, uh, put together uh, a case study PowerPoint presentation and uh, let's get into it. I'm sure that many of you that have soft story buildings are eager to learn more about what it's gonna take to get that building compliant and getting it up to speed. So let's, uh, let's start our, our slide presentation. <clears throat> so for those of you that don't know, in Santa Monica, um, Los Angeles, and soon to be West Hollywood, any buildings that have this subterranean parking lot like this are considered soft story buildings and they need to be retrofitted in order to, uh, to be able to sustain an earthquake. So this is, uh, this is me and, and uh, my project manager, Steve. We went to a training seminar held by Simpson Strong Tie, one of the leading manufacturers of moment frames. And this, what we're holding up here in this, we're, we're, we're kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, holding on here to the steel uh, this is really a very exciting piece of equipment. It's an invention that Simpson has developed over probably 10 years. And it's a moment frame system that is weld free. So what, what we want you to know is, we're gonna get into it in detail, but uh, that, that's just basically a little explanation of what's going on in that picture. So what, what our team is what our team is prepared to offer you is a full solution, okay? We will help you with the design, um, the design of the repair. In many cases, uh, some of our clients have opted to do an interior remodel of the units that are affected by the soft story. We can do that. We can help you de design the soft story retrofit itself. So we can help uh, figure out whether it's, you know, what it's gonna entail to get the repair done. If it's gonna be a moment frame or strong walls or whatever the case may be. We will also represent you with the city of with the corresponding city, city of LA, city of Santa Monica, and help um, put together a comprehensive plan to retrofit the building, present it to the city, get your building permits approved, and uh, manage the, the project and the construction. So let's get into a little bit about, uh, a little bit uh, in-depth explanation of what a soft story uh, is. <clears throat> Typically speaking, um, like like on the diagram on top, you'll it'll be a, a habitable unit. Okay, that's that's a key component. Some of you may have these parking structures that don't have a habitable unit, but are soft story. The code is very specific. It talks about <coughs> units that are soft that are that have a habitable unit over the parking. Okay, if you notice in here, here's my little my cursor. The this little section here, this post, holds up the second story, but it's considered um, it, it, although it has good vertical load, it doesn't necessarily have very good lateral uh, resistance, okay? So just so that you know what a soft story building is, you're missing a shear wall 
you know, there, there's basically no walls on this side of the building. In this building right here, somebody put this cover. This is non-structural. It's just basically plywood and, um, and two by fours. It has no sheer strength. It has no uh, vertical strength. It's just basically meant to keep people out of that parking space. Uh, <clears throat> but getting back to the structure of the soft story, it's, it's typically a wood frame construction building, okay, with uh, parking tucked in and it's missing uh, walls on the first floor or on the ground floor. So let, let's talk about what are the areas affected. This is a heat map uh, put together by the uh, LA Times. It's a really cool um, way to see how the city's affected. <clears throat> so up, up top here in this area, this is like the valley. And um, so this is like Hollywood, uh, just into Glendale and the San Fernando Valley. There's in the city of LA, I think there's something like 14,500 buildings or something, something in that neighborhood um, that are affected and need to be retrofitted. So typically speaking, um, there's a, well, according to this picture of this heat map, there's a high concentration in the valley and along the, the 10 corridor from downtown LA all the way to the city. There is um, you know, this is also city of LA for those of you who don't know along the the 110 freeway from downtown all the way down to San Pedro That little corridor there is city of LA. So it's also affected by um, by the retrofit requirements Okay, so hopefully that helps by the way, please share this uh, this this feed if you find it interesting you if you know somebody that owns a soft story building or is affected by the law maybe um, you have, you know somebody who's a tenant in a soft story building, share it with them. I think it's gonna be really good information. Our goal is to make sure that you are informed about a soft story retrofit and, and making sure that you understand what it takes to get it fixed. So this is a, a kind of a, a cool representation of a type of a repair. Uh, this is a moment frame repair. The engineers will design uh, a moment frame that can resist the force. And we'll get into a little bit of the physics behind that in a bit. <clears throat> so th this is a very common sketch. I'm sure you guys have found this online, um, this, this diagram here. And the, 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 the amount of moment frames that need to be installed is a, uh, a factor of a few things that we'll get into in a little bit more detail. So in this case, um, it looks in this diagram here, it looks like you need two moment frames. I would say in most buildings, only one moment frame is required. Very few buildings require two. But there are some special some special circumstances, okay? So in this case, this moment frame is actually going to be buried in the embedded, embedded, not buried, but embedded in the concrete and it'll be it'll be tied in with a bunch of rebar and um, <clears throat> other fortifying uh, um, concrete design. Uh, we'll get into some detail on that. We have uh, some pretty cool little diagrams for that. So the, the locations where, where it's affected, where the kind of the, the, the big areas, in, in the Bay Area, there's, a, there's many, uh, 27,000. LA, we got 13,500. And there's 17, 1,700 in Santa Monica. I've heard some stuff, some reports that Santa Monica may have up to um, 2,000. But these are these are kind of uh, uh, informal, published numbers by a few different sources that we got. Bottom line is there's a lot of buildings. There's definitely a lot of buildings that need to be retrofitted. Now, in the city of Los Angeles, if you're in the city of Los Angeles, the ordinance that affects you is 1838-93 and 1840-81. Now, don't panic if you haven't written that down. This, um, this broadcast will be available for you later. And uh, we can also make the slides available for download, which we will. Just give us a couple days. We'll post it on uh, Facebook and we'll also post it on YouTube. In the city of West Hollywood, that's your ordinance. And in Santa Monica, uh, 2357 is the ordinance that was passed last year. You have a little bit more time in Santa Monica. Um, LA, there's, we're definitely going into the third year. And uh, we'll talk about like the importance of getting started if you haven't gotten started, uh, because there's some market conditions that are gonna affect you and are gonna affect the cost. So the general criteria basically is the building has to have been built before uh, 1979 
uh, it has to be three units or more specifically three in the city of LA Santa Monica may vary a little bit but uh, three units or more and um, basically you have to have a dwelling uh, on top so in this case there's two dwell you know two floors on top so this this is definitely higher on the priority scale uh, because of the size of the building let's talk about uh, the compliance timeline there's a, a few things to uh, consider here this is just some more stats um, well not more stats but um, we have a little bit of info here that that helps kind of shape where you are on the priority list for those of you ha I want to know if uh, anybody watching have, have any of you gotten your notice and to comply uh, do we have anybody uh, anybody's posting go ahead and post if you've got your notice to comply and, and what your compliance date is I'd be curious to to share that with um, the other viewers so that they can I mean you know this is you got to think of yourselves folks as a, as a community right like uh, for you building owners that wh whether you're a tenant or you're a building owner that's affected by this it's a pretty significant thing um, so really I, I think it's as part of your education get yourself um, up to speed on on the on the matter it's really kind of a cool thing I think to to share your experiences uh, with each other so that's why I'm asking if you if you have um, any notices if you can post up give us a, a like or, or um, some type of indication on, on Facebook that uh, you have a, an affected card that be that would be cool to to share that with the other viewers so you have to put together a um, a set of a plan there's there's a couple things you have to deal with the tenants so you have to come up with um, a plan to if, you, if the tenants are going to be displaced and you also have to come up with a plan for the retrofit work the sooner you start on this the better it is because of the the current conditions in the construction world all of the contractors are working right now there's very few contractors that have the skill sets the tools to do this uh, and and there's really no incentive for them to do this uh, because they're busy doing building kitchen remodels and home additions and stuff like that this set of this type of construction requires a very significant um, investment in tools and a very niche type of, of skill set so I'm I'm thinking that we're gonna have a, a shortage of labor as the crunch gets uh, bigger uh, because of the demand you know it, the the demand the demand will increase uh, the closer the people in Los Angeles and Santa Monica get to these deadlines and they they sent out these notices in bands right uh, based on the priority a lot of it has to do with how many stories are above the parking structure the taller the stories uh, the, the higher the priority and we have some really good videos we're gonna share with you these videos so if you haven't seen what a, a two-story building how a two-story building behaves in an earthquake we have an amazing video to share with you so stay tuned okay so this is what happens right I mean um, uh, I guess it's this is like the worst case scenario right this is a total building failure and um, it make no mistake folks this is real this is possible um, especially on the units that have two decks above the the parking structure um, those are the most vulnerable against uh, collapse and I'll show you the video the video is pretty amazing it, it really details like what what could happen right so there's a couple of forces happening um, there's a back and forth force and there's then there's like a, a rotational force and a lot of it has to depend a lot of how the building moves depends how far the building is from the epicenter and the weight of the building in conjunction with how the building is tied to the ground so those are those are kind of the the key factors that affect uh, how a building behaves in an earthquake so for those of you that didn't know we just had an earthquake a few days ago a uh, little one a little 4.0 well 4.0 it was uh, uh, I guess there's a new fault line that was uh, discovered under Rodale Drive of all places you know um, so these fault lines you know they're they're as as technology improves the uh, the geologists and the, the, the folks that study uh, earthquakes and earthquake movement will as the technology gets better the mapping capabilities become better and they're able to find um, faults that we didn't know existed 
this is a, a pretty uh, a pretty uh, well uh, diagram of where the fault lines are. This is posted by uh, the Ge Geological Society. Well, it was created by the Geological Society. It was posted by the LA Times. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool, clear representation of where these fault lines are. And uh, Lionel, Lionel's online. Hey, Lionel, man, how you doing? Good to see, good to see you online. Make sure you share the post with uh, with your friends. Um, so I want to give a shout out to you guys. If you guys are online, you have some questions, please post your questions. Post your questions um, so we can, um, we want to make this interactive. Okay, so this fault line here, notice that this fault line runs parallel to the 10 freeway. So this the 10 freeway is considered in close proximity to the fault line. And in this area here, for those of you that were in Los Angeles during the, the big earthquake, uh, there was a section of the 10 freeway that collapsed uh, kind of in, in this area here. I don't remember if it was the Overland or the Sentinella exit, but it was definitely um, a, a a really unfortunate thing. It was very disruptive, and um, we we definitely don't want that. You know, thank God all of that, all of that stretch has been retrofitted since uh, since the last earthquake. But so, if you live along this fault line, you will the the engineer will create a a solution for your retrofit will be heavier duty because the the distance from your house to the known fault lines that goes into the equation of how much or how big, how heavy, how strong the retrofit members have to be, okay? So these are uh, some of the, the, the known fault lines. And again, we'll, we'll let you uh, download this stuff. Oh, we got five shares. Hey, thanks guys, we got five shares, that's awesome. So let's, uh, let's talk about like the, how the building moves, okay? So the, there's, there's three outcomes. Um, there's the racking, the sliding, where it actually slides off the foundation, and eventually if the, the racking is strong enough, okay, the building will actually overturn. It'll fall, it'll slip off the foundation, and it'll turn over. Uh, unfortunately, in California, here in, in LA, a lot of these buildings are stacked real close, so it'll actually fall onto your neighbor's building, and you'll be responsible for whatever damage uh, happens. So that would be, that would be bad, that'd be, that'd be a bad situation. Uh, the collapse will, will basically crush uh, whatever cars are underneath, obviously, but the, the, it'll, it can also bite into the property line. <coughs> so some of you may have a building that has a shared driveway. If the building collapses, it'll slide off. As it collapses, it'll block the driveway of you know, of the neighbor and stuff. So, so just think about that. So these are the things that we are engineering against, right? To keep the building on solid ground. We have a question from Eatland Fig. She wants to know about the time frame. She says, what are the general time frames that different cities gave? So most cities uh, have given three years uh, to get it done. Some cities um, up to up to two years. It's a little bit faster. And there's there's a way. There's a you have to show during the process you have to show that you're making some um, progress in getting um, getting your retrofit done. So they want the many of the cities are asking for you to submit plans for the design, even though you're not ready to start construction. Some of the cities, city of LA, is allowing is helping out with the cost of construction. Um, they've put together um, a means to. Um, uh, postpone it, it has to do with your tax basis your property taxes so there's there's some kind of cool stuff out there to help you with financing luckily so getting back to timeline um, three years two to three years depending on which city you're in so let's let's look at uh, at this video here this oh wait I went back how do we I want to tap in the Japanese have actually put together a um, they've built a huge warehouse where they build the, it's basically a shake platform and they build out the um, they build out these buildings and then they just shake them until they break so so let's watch uh, let's watch some of this footage this is a single family residence if you're here in the south bay i think the construction is very similar to what a tall and skinny would look like and by the way if you own a tall and skinny here in the south bay or um, it's it's a soft story building, by the way. So so check this out.
so as, as you can tell, the, the house on the right was not retrofitted, earthquake retrofitted, the house on the left was. Kind of crazy, huh? In a matter of less than less than a minute, was a, it, it took about 37 seconds for the structure to collapse. So it happens very quick, folks, very quick. Go back to our slide, all right. So we got another one here. Okay, this one is really cool. Sorry, did I, I did say Japan, right? Uh, yeah, so the Japanese Institute. Um, this is two stories above the ground level, two stories above the ground level. Let's check this out. Of all of the videos of the testing, um, the University of Colorado and San Diego put together a shake test. Uh, this is probably the largest, there we go. So you see, you see the racking, the racking uh, motion on the unit on the right. See how it's now it's almost at its apex, where it cannot sustain itself. That's rolling over. That would be bad. But it would be dead. Yep, everybody inside would be dead. So think about this: um, the square footage, um, multiply the square footage of your place by fifty and you can determine how much the building weighs. So in that scenario from what you just saw, the scenario that you just saw, you have, you have a building that um, weighs probably 40,000 pounds. Can you imagine with that force, that building shaking back and forth? So, so we were, we, were, we were just doing some rough math on, on uh, one of the projects that were, actually, I'll, I'll get to that when we get to that picture, but um, there's a lot of weight, and the seismic, there's a lot of weight of the building. The seismic movement um, can have a very significant effect. So, you know, I had a, um, a prospect customer, the customer that, um, a prospect customer, the, he owns a building in Van Nuys, I'm gonna show you, show you this building. He was, was, I guess somebody else went to his um, building and they gave him a quote and they told him they only needed one moment frame. And he asked me, hey, how do you know how many moment frames you need or what's the cost per moment frame? The, the, so, let, so let's talk about how it's determined what the retrofit is gonna be like, okay? The engineer will consider the weight of the building, develop a seismic coefficient, determine what the load distribution is, and then take into account the the soil and the proximity to the fault. Okay, so so if you wanted to see the math, okay, this is this is kind of this is there's a few different formulas, but this is kind of like the simplest one that we found. So we can uh, we can share this this with you. So so W represents the weight of the building. Um, a H uh, represents a horizontal seismic coefficient. The basically we are looking at in very layman's terms you're considering the entire weight of the building, okay, in relation to um, the, the distance from the building to the fault line. And, and the weight of the building is going to create a, um, a significant amount of, of force, and the design for the retrofit has to be able to overcome that force. Okay, so the, the, the retrofit has to create enough resilience and resistance that it keeps the building from collapsing or suffering from, from catastrophic failure. So, so in essence, you, you're taking account the weight of the building, the proximity to the, the known fault, and you're developing a design that can resist the, the energy that will be created, uh, the kinetic energy in, within the building created by the earthquake. So, does it, did everybody get that? How many how many people did I lose? Give me a give me a give me a little uh, what, what a, like. give me a comment, a like, or what, the little emoji. Do you have a, like a, a frustrated emoji look? And then, anyway, so this is a, a picture of a retrofit in the city of LA. These moment frames. So it has some moment frame, has some shear wall, has some steel posts. These moment frames. There's two different uh, moment frames. There's one that's welded on site, which is this. And then there's, there's another one that I'll share with you later, created by Simpson. Give me a, a, a shot of this. 
give me a close-up shot of this. Um, so Simpson Strong Tide actually designed um, this this system that has no welds. See how it's all bolted together? We'll go into some detail on that a little bit later. All right, so let's look at the first case study um, video, or the face, first case study of building. This building is managed, um, actually, yeah, I guess it's, it's owned by a prospect customer that came, came to us. It's in West LA. Really kind of cool looking building. It's off of uh, Sawtell. Um, this building, I got to tell you, the front, I didn't go to the back of the building. I, I drove by because I was at the Santa Monica job and uh, I, wa I wanted to stop by a couple of these so I can give the owner some feedback. This building is gonna be a little tricky. There's a couple of things that are gonna make it tricky. The, there's a very significant steep grade of this driveway. You can't really tell from this picture, but can you, can you guys tell that this is much lower than, uh, whoops, that this is much lower than this area here. See how the block wall gets bigger here and it's a little bit narrow there? Anyway, it's a little kind of a optical illusion of the driveway that it looks flat. It's not flat. So one of the key things with these uh, soft story uh, repairs is that you have to get the clearance. So if we put a big old steel beam thing here, um, you, you may not be able to get, some of these cars may not be able to get clearance, okay? Um, oh, by the way, I'm gonna give you guys a, um, I'll tell you what, I think, I'll give you guys a gift card. So this is your first quiz. Now, I, I gotta tell you that uh, I can't, um, I can't resist, right? I'm, I'm a, I'm a part-time college professor, so I love quizzing my students. So, but as part of your, and you know, since you're not going to get a grade on the, on this quiz, um, if you get it right, the first uh, three people to get it right will, I will, um, get, I'll share a gift card. I got some coffee gift cards. I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy you dinner at the uh, at the Olive Garden. I got some Red Lobster. You guys like the Red Lobster? Here? Got some uh, Starbucks gift cards. What else we got here? We got some Pete's. Oh, by the way, by the way, the first five people to share, I'll give a gift card to. By the way, first five people, sh if, if you share with us, uh, first five people, I'll give you a gift card. Just uh, tell me which one you want. I got Starbucks. I got, oh, I got Home Depot here. I got, oh, I got an Olive Garden, 25 bucks, 25 bucks. Free salad and breadsticks. Got a little Home Depot card. Anyway, okay, so here's the quiz question. Where on this opening, let's go back over to the opening. Where on this opening do you think that the, well, first of all, do you think a moment frame, let's go back to that picture. Yeah. Do you think that the moment frame, do you think that this opening will require a moment frame? That's question number one. So remember, a moment frame is, uh, is this deal here. That's a moment frame, a steel frame. Or do you think it can be done with a, Simpson strong wall, okay? And if you have the moment frame, where would it be? Bay number one, bay number two, or bay number three? All right, hey folks, uh, let's go to a little quick commercial break here. Wanna give you guys a chance to uh, get some water, get, to, uh, get yourself situated, and we'll be right back. Hey YouTubers, did you get a notice to comply from the city of Santa Monica or Los Angeles? You're gonna need a pair of these. You're gonna need some plans. You're gonna need architectural, engineering, and city representation. I am providing a turnkey solution for you. For $12,497, I'm gonna give you architectural, engineering, and city representation. If you want more information about soft story repair, please visit our website, baycitiesconstruction.com. Follow the link below. And give our offices a call at 888-881-7355. My name is Alex Rodriguez with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Hey folks, we're back. This is another case study. This was uh, sent over to me by pro a prospect. His name's Dean. I hope he's watching. I hope he will watch. So Dean had a very good question. He, he uh, um, was told that this section here required no moment frame. Now, you got to understand that Dean has parking in two spaces. So in the front here, obviously you got those three cars. Say hi to Junior. Junior, hey man, thanks for joining us, Junior. Uh, hey, we just Junior, we just covered your building, by the way. I hope uh, hope you have a chance to to see it on the rebroadcast. Um, so we're talking about Dean's building here. This is the backside of Dean's building. Okay, so he's got two parking areas. 
he's got the um, the the front or actually the side I guess and then this is kind of like probably like a access from an alley so you know for, for those for those of you that are wondering like what makes the building weak right the the fact that you're missing this whole wall here this whole wall is gone right so all you're holding is the post now the post is totally made to carry the load of the building but it's not made to um, for the, the the lateral forces, right? So the 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 sideway, the back to back um, effect that an earthquake causes. Okay. So if you, if you turn your attention to to this area here, this is the area that for sure will require a moment beam. So typically speaking, we want to put those columns, um, the the new I beam columns, in front of the existing columns, so that your parking is minimally affected. And if you notice, this other column will probably be at that other column and if you're wondering what this blue stuff is this area basically has to be trenched out we we cut the concrete excavate and build a steel reinforced it's called the grade beam it's a basically a steel reinforced uh, footing that the new posts will be tied into okay so that's that's basically the the the, the crux of the retrofit where it gets a little tricky is in dealing with a lot of the infrastructure. See, a lot of these uh, garages, they have plumbing and electrical and all that stuff. And sometimes those things are affected, they have to be relocated. Um, other times we will have to open up the stucco right next to the beam and uh, make sure that, that there's blocking in there. There's gonna be some very specific connectors that are gonna tie in. And I, God, I wish I could, I could zoom in, but I can't zoom in anymore. Um, that basically what we're going to do is we're going to tie in the existing beam the this steel beam by the way it will be in front of of the wood beam this is a, this represents represents a wood beam this right here is that same wood beam right so there's there's going to be some reinforcement behind this stucco and all of these things will be tied together the the new blocking that'll be within the stucco footprint will tie down to the wood and the the I beam will then be screwed into uh, also the um, the existing wood beam. So very seldom will you see this beam be actually removed. Okay, I would say probably 90% of the time the the new I beam the new I beam the moment frame will be installed in front of the existing wooden beam. This project or this uh, this building so i think it's a 10 maybe a 15 unit building i think it's a 15 unit building in santa monica this was also um sent over to us actually i did a site visit on this it was sent over by uh the company that the company that manages this building so this building is really wide right so it's gonna it's gonna require significant retrofit now this is the back of the building i don't know if we have a front shot oh no that's the next building so the front is identical to this, pretty much the opening. So <clears throat> um, I haven't sent this over to my engineer for for an evaluation yet. So I'm, I'm curious to see. It's, it's very possible that this will require two moment frames, one in the front and one in the rear, mostly because, guess what? You got two living spaces above. So that adds a tremendous amount of weight so if you think about it, remember I told you that the roof and the floor plan weigh, the roof and the floor, the roof and the floor weigh about 50 pounds per square foot. So now you've got to add another 30 to 32 pounds for that bottom floor. So you're looking at about 80 pounds per square foot and you multiply that by the square footage of this area, right? So, so from the back of this here to the, to, to the front. That would be the the square footage affected. So anyway, without getting a whole lot, without getting too technical about that, um, that weight is what affects how strong, how heavy the moment frame has to be. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a job that we just got the engineering plans back. It's a ten unit building in West LA, over by Beverlywood. I will give a gift card to the first person that gets this right. Where, if any, will we put in the moment frames uh, for this job? So I'll, give a, I got, I'll buy you dinner at the Olive Garden. 
by dinner at the Olive Garden, if you can get this right. Does, does the front of this building require uh, a moment frame or a hardy panel? First person that gets that right, I will I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy you dinner at the, uh, the delicious and not necessarily nutritious Olive Garden. But, uh, okay, so let me know, folks. Do we have any, get anybody posting stuff? Any, anybody post any response to that? Junior said, hey, that's my building. Oh, this one right here, the green one? Uh, the prior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, Junior, I, I used it as a case study. Uh, your, your building had uh, some pretty cool attributes to it. He had a question. He had an answer to the prior question you had said. Oh, okay. He said there's going to be a moment frame in bay number one. In bay number one. There's a moment frame in bay number one. Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. A moment frame in bay number one. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think, I don't know. Who else? What do you guys think? You guys agree or disagree? Do you think this building on Sawtell is going to require a moment frame? You guys think this building on Sawtell is going to require a moment frame uh, or a Simpson strong wall? What do you guys think? And if the, a moment frame, where would it be? Where would it be? Would it be bay number one, bay number two, bay number three? Post your, your comments. Uh, Brian will read it out loud for us. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that, Junior. Thanks, so. That's the, hey, this what that's what makes this fun, right? Like to have a interactivity with our audience. All right. So this building is over in Beverly Wood. What do you guys think? Moment frame or no moment frame? If so, where? The right side or the left side? Right side or the left side? Right side or the left side? Hey, does that that next slide does it have an answer? Oh, I can't. I can't go to the next slide. I need. I need a couple of you guys to guess, because if I go to the next slide, I'm gonna show you the the answer, and then I can't give away uh, a dinner at the uh, at the Olive Garden. I'll put you so you can skip it if you want. Okay. Cool. 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 Let's, we're gonna skip it. We're gonna come back to it. We're gonna come back to it. Come back to it. All right. Let's talk. Um, go ahead and post your 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 comments on um, the building over in in Beverly Wood. That's that green building with the rocks in Beverly Wood. Which what do you what do you guys think? Moment frame or no moment frame? All right. In the meantime, and we get some answers, let me show you what the plans look like for a moment frame. So this is, and I'm, I got to tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to make a case for Simpson versus having a moment frame that's welded. Okay. In, in fact, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go tour the Simpson factory over in Riverside, California. It's a California company. So I'm definitely going to share that video with you guys. It's going to be pretty cool. We're pretty stoked about doing that. We'll talk to the reps. All right. So let's get back into this diagram here. So notice in here that these are bolts. This is a Simpson frame. There is a very significant advantage to using the Simpson uh, prefabricated moment frame. I'm going to tell you what that is. Because it has no welds, there is no inspections necessary on the site for this connection. That's number one. I lost my mouse. Okay. This typically, this weld requires an inspection. That's number one. What, number two, because you don't have the series of inspections necessary, you can cut the total time of construction down by maybe 10 days. Okay. It's a big deal. That's number one. Number two. The, the fact that Simpson will pre-design the way that this frame is connected to the structure and tell me exactly how to attach it, that cuts down on uncertainty. When I get a set of plans and it's Simpson based, um, it's a lot easier to determine labor costs, okay? So why, what's the difference? Well, when somebody welds it, nobody, the, the people that weld it don't mark on the beam in the areas that I could drill or not drill, right? Like they just basically weld it on site and that's it. Simpson will actually deliver it on site with wooden nailers that assist in the attachment of the new moment frame to the existing structure in a very clear way, in a very clear way. Can people figure it out? Of course, they can figure it out if it's welded. But like that picture I showed you before of that other LA building that was welded, from the plans, it's very technical and it's very difficult to understand where I can weld. There's it, the Simpson frames come with these little cool stickers. Uh, yeah, I know. Construction. You need a sticker, okay? There, you need a sticker that says, don't drill here, okay? Believe me. 
So it comes with these stickers, it comes with these areas that identifies parts of the beam that you cannot drill, you cannot tap into, okay? And with the Simpson, most of the time, there is no drilling necessary. It comes ready to attach. They design it, they come and they, they do a walkthrough, all that stuff. So that's the second reason. The third reason is Simpson will actually create and has tested this system uh, all the way to failure, okay? They cut down engineering costs by a lot because they submit all of the ground engineering for the grade beam. This is the grade beam. It's a representation of the concrete that's going to be uh, poured into, into the ground and connected. They give you <coughs> what the, the, the rebar reinforcement has to look like. They give you everything. They really take a lot of the work, a lot of the burden from the engineer away. Okay, now, you'll have a lot of engineers that may not be hip to this. There, there'll be structural engineers that have built steel buildings and are used to that. And man, you'll get a, a, a very technical set of plans that will you know, definitely uh, be up to code, be, uh, be able to uh, sustain uh, the earthquake that it's designed for. I don't think there's, there's any question about that. The bigger deal, the bigger issue is that the plans are very, very complex. And it's unclear how these connections the connections to the new steel is going to is going to take place with the old that causes the contractors to put in a, a bigger i mean for lack of a better word a buffer amount of of time which equates to money on, on your end if, if you're paying for it so simpson cuts a lot of that down it cuts the engineering cost down it cuts down the uncertainty in the plans and it also cuts down the time of installation those beams are ready to to, to they're ready to roll they get delivered, they can be assembled on site, and they'll, you can install those beams in one day. Now, the other thing that is really cool is this connection. I want to draw your attention to the diagram again. The, this connection here is, uh, this is called the fuse. There's, there, I'm going to show you a picture of it. Um, actually, go back to me and make this bigger. This is an awesome picture. You see in here the orange sections? That's called the fuse. In the event that there's a major, major earthquake and that piece, that connective piece is damaged, I could come back, open up that section, unscrew the bolts, okay, and put in a new fuse in that section. They call it a fuse. It's not me inventing that word. They actually call that orange uh, uh, connecting bar a fuse. It's, it is made to uh, contort and it's made to be to make it easy to remove. If this was welded and it was contorted, it is a big, big deal. Most of the time, the whole section would have to be removed, okay? Would have to be ground out and removed. So, it's really an amazing product. It's really an amazing product. So, let me show you uh, uh, the diagram of, um, and just stay on there because I'm gonna take a little something off. This is the diagram that Simpson, Simpson came up with that reinforces the, um, the foundation. See that right there? So this is the way, basically you got these long bolts that go all the way down. This, by the way, is typically 24 inches, this, um, this setup here. <clears throat> There's a few different uh, connection, connecting methods. Um, whoop, go back, whoops, sorry. There's a few different connecting methods, um, depending on the weight of the building, uh, will determine how deep you know this footing is and how heavy the um, posts are on the moment frame. So these are these are all the uh, components of that 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 really set aside a, a prefabricated system versus reinventing the wheel. Look, if you if you you if you don't use if you need a moment frame and you don't use a Simpson. Um, product, the Simpson moment frame. Your engineer has to reinvent the wheel. He has to, he literally has to reinvent the wheel. Has to, has to determine what the weight of that beam is going to be, all of that stuff. Uh, the weight of the beam, the dimensions of the beam, of the moment frame. Under this scenario, when, they use, when we use the Simpson strong type frame, basically he needs, he will give, or, or she, will deliver to Simpson the calcs that the moment frame has to resist. And then Simpson, the burden is on Simpson to be able to identify what that system is gonna look like. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty 
pretty amazing um, uh, setup here. I want to show you this picture here. I thought that was really a, a, a cool picture of the fuses, how they're uh, connected. Actually, let's go to this camera here. So you see that those orange sections, those are the sections that can be replaced. You can't deal with that. You can't deal with that if it's, if it's welded, okay? That's, that's pretty, pretty awesome, pretty awesome technology. All of this stuff, you know, they, they give you the specs for assembling the whole deal. And then Rimmer was telling you about how it's connected. You see this, um, sorry, this nailer. <laughs> Look at you a little bit. This nailer here. They will, the, the, the beam will already come, the moment frame will come already with these nailers. And that, that basically is what we need in order to make the attachment to the existing building. See, see the bottom here where you have the nailers on both sides of the, of the system? Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Anybody have any questions about this from what you, you guys have seen so far? Do we have any, um, we have any guesses on um, that, the building on Beverlywood? Any guesses on the building in Beverlywood? Moment frame or no moment frame? What do you say? Junior says no moment frame. No moment frame. Oh. So then, uh, okay, all right, all right. We'll go back. Anybody else? Anybody else uh, give us a guess? Junior's right. This retrofit calls for uh, two Simpson strong walls, a nice deep uh, new footing, and then two posts. And then here's your other strong wall right there. All of the strong walls will have a, a, a bay that's about five feet, 10 inches, I think, wide. 24 wide, 24 deep, five, almost six feet long. Total deal there, yeah. So Junior, dinner's on me, man, at the Olive Garden. We're gonna, I'm gonna get you set up. I'll get you set up with the, the Olive Garden. Anybody else, anybody else? Uh, Anybody else post anything? Okay, so that's that's what she looks like now. By the way, um, I do think we're gonna do the favor for the customer and get rid of those rocks. It's all that limestone. So, um, well, hey, hey folks, um, I hope you've enjoyed our um, presentation of the Soft Story Retrofit. Uh, please post uh, any more comments, any more likes. Share them with uh, with somebody you know. Love to um, to see what uh, your thoughts were. Did you find this um, entertaining and informative? Hopefully, you found it more informative than entertaining. Although I try and be entertaining. Yeah, a couple more slides at the end. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's get to those bad boys here. So, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, we are posting a live show. We're shooting a live show every Tuesday, five o'clock here on Facebook. We're also gonna rebroadcast this on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So you go to uh, YouTube uh, slash Bay Cities Construction and you'll find our, our channel there. Eventually we're gonna develop the capabilities of broadcasting live to both of those, uh, both of those channels. Uh, we always, always, always welcome your questions. That makes the show a lot better. And for any of you that wanna contact me, my offices are in Torrance, California. And we're at, that's our address right there, 23890 Hawthorne Boulevard. My office number is posted there. Look forward to talking to you. Look forward to uh, consulting with you, helping you figure out a solution for your, your building. Uh, really, we're here to help. We're here to, to work with you and figure out a solution, help you navigate the world of um, soft story retrofitting. Uh, by the way, I, should, I, I, I do want to post uh, or I do want to uh, point out one thing. When we're involved with the retrofit, we want to find you the, the least expensive solution, okay? Um, but we want to find you a true solution. All the time I get asked, hey, you know, how much does it cost to do this retrofit? How much does it cost to do this? How much does it cost to do that? The truth is that you need, a, you need to have a design developed okay you can't if somebody comes to your place and gives you like a, a, a number and they say that's what it's going to be without plans that's not a real number okay it's my job to help you navigate you through this whole deal come up with um, a, a, a solution that will work that will provide you the safety and assurance that the building is supported correctly but also taking into account that 
that you know this is going to cost a lot of money and we want to figure out a way that is that is going to be cost effective to get to get the 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 mission accomplished which is getting the getting you compliant with this with the city so keep those things in mind um, oftentimes um, um, we we talk about like what do we think the the solution is going to be when I, I first do a, an initial consultation so let's t let's talk about kind of that process uh, if you do contact us if you do need help with basically with with getting a soft story retrofit done please contact my office this is the steps you, I would like you to please take some good pictures uh, pretty much mimicking kind of what like I, I showed you in this presentation some wide shots uh, from the street and then maybe some close-ups where those connections are going to be we want to see uh, what effect there's going to be to the waistlines or any other uh, stuff coming down from from the, the ceiling from the units above you so basically uh, you shoot me over some pictures we'll talk about what we think it's going to take to get it done and um, I, I will put up uh, uh, a proposal for you for the the design we are running right now a special uh, depending on we're running a special 90% of the people that have applied have qualified for the special but it's twelve thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and it includes full city representation and the full design fee if um, if you go back um, so so let me let me share something with you that building that was that had the two openings one on the side and um, not this one let me share this with you this one this building right here is actually two thousand dollars more the amount of engineering is going to be a little bit more if you have one opening um, for sure we can do the the two thousand four ninety seven I think in this particular case uh, I quoted the owner fourteen thousand four ninety seven and I what I did though is uh, I credit him back I offered to credit him back the additional two thousand dollars towards the construction cost so you should know that I'm willing to work with you uh, I want you to to feel comfortable about the whole thing we won't we don't um, um, I, I, I believe that when I first talked to him about this we we're talking about the price for engineering I think that he because he had gotten some kind of verbal quote from somebody else I think that that he felt like that this that he was told that this area doesn't need a moment frame we do not add more structural stuff than is necessary okay if the engineer says that this stuff is required here two hardy frames that's what's required there that's it if it's if if the engineer were to say hey that requires a moment frame not hardy panels and by the way hardy panels hardy panels or Simpson strong walls are a lot less expensive than a moment frame by the way um, any anyhow we will we're here to help you we're here to consult with you and and figure out a solution that's going to work um, I'm not here to sell extra moment frames that you're not that are not necessary okay we're here to do the best job that we can and make sure that the, your tenants are safe that your your wealth is protected right I mean in, in many cases these buildings are worth two three four million dollars so we want to make sure that your wealth is protected in the event of an earthquake you know you don't have and and obviously to prevent loss of life for your tenants so those are all things that are super important and they're really the focus of of how we approach a project so for for these larger buildings it may be that we will have to do it for fourteen thousand four ninety seven look are there people that are cheaper than that probably are there people that are more than that absolutely absolutely our our goal is to help run you through the process of getting you approved and getting you compliant we do everything for you if you did the engineering yourself or you ran around and wanted to represent yourself I'm sure it'd be it'd be less expensive and the truth is that that that's not what we're here for we're here for the the folks that want a turnkey solution and a turnkey solution this is what we can do it for if your building is less than 10 units it'll probably be the 12497 if if it has two openings it'll probably be the 14497 so that you know I'm, I'm just pretty I just want to be upfront and transparent with you this is what we're looking at um, amongst the buildings that we have found the the time that it takes to do the engineering is significant the time that it takes to go to the city and battle it out and make sure that uh, these things get approved and that you have uh, uh, a, a very clear path to getting a building permit uh, all of these things take a lot of time a lot of energy and we're here for you we're here to do it for you so uh, keep that in mind I'd love to talk to you about your project I'd love to answer any questions that you have please post them 
always, always, we're very appreciative of you sharing the stream. And I hope to see you next week at our next show. Um, my name's Alex with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Hey YouTubers, did you get a notice to comply from the city of Santa Monica or Los Angeles? You're going to need a pair of these. You're going to need some plans. You're going to need architectural, engineering, and city representation. I am providing a turnkey solution for you. For $12,497, I'm going to give you architectural, engineering, and city representation. If you want more information about soft story repair, please visit our website, baycitiesconstruction.com. Follow the link below and give our offices a call at 888-881-7355. My name is Alex Rodriguez with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros.